Welcome to Movie Land. Today I will show you a drama, thriller film from 2011, titled Contagion. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Day 2 Beth is at an airport lounge talking on the phone with John, whom she's having an affair with. While waiting for her flight, she looks sick and is coughing, but brushes it off as her being jet lagged. In Hong Kong a young man gets off a ferry and takes the subway. By the time he gets home, he is sweating profusely. When he leaves his apartment, his vision gets blurry, and he walks into traffic. In London a model is feeling sick, so she leaves work and goes back to her hotel room. Later the hotel staff come into the room and find her dead on the bathroom floor. A businessman flies to Tokyo and takes the bus, but collapses on the floor. An onlooker films him with his phone. Beth arrives home to her son and her husband Mitch. Day 3 In San Francisco a blogger Alan is watching the video of the businessman collapsing. He's guessing it might be mercury poisoning from the fish, and that there are probably more people like him that just weren't caught on camera. Mitch picks his son up from school, and is informed that he's been coughing and has elevated body temperature. Later as he is telling his wife about his day, she drops her cup and when he comes to help, she collapses on the floor and starts seizing. They are in the hospital and she starts seizing again. A bit later the doctor informs Mitch that she has passed away. He is in shock and can't accept it, saying they just talked and she was just jet-lagged. The doctor doesn't know what caused it so he recommends an autopsy. As Mitch is driving home he gets a call from the babysitter that informs him that his son isn't breathing. He tells her to call and rushes home to find him dead as well. Day 5 Two medical examiners are doing an autopsy on Beth's body. As they open her skull, they notice something strange on her brain. One of them asks whether he should take a sample, but the other instructs him to move away from the table and call everyone. Day 6 Dr. Aaron Mears works for the CDC. She is briefed by Dr. Cheever on her part of containing the virus. She is tasked to travel to Minnesota where she is to investigate and contain cases of infection. Mitch is in quarantine at a hospital. He is visited by his daughter Jory from a previous marriage. He says that he isn't sick and is only there as a precaution. She says that she should have been there and could have helped but he says she would have gotten sick too. He tells her to go back to her mother but seeing as she's all he got left she decides to stay with him. Dr. Aaron is briefing government officials on the mysterious outbreak that has reached confirmed cases and deaths. She informs them that it's most likely transmitted through air and maybe surfaces as well. The officials don't want to freak out the public because they don't even know what they're dealing with. Aaron says that to determine the potential scale of the epidemic, it's crucial to figure out the average number of people one person can infect. Two scientists are working with the brain sample from Beth in a secure lab. They don't know what this virus is, so they send the results to a scientist that might. Later as Ian is walking out of his lab, informing the scientists that the virus strain has never been seen before and appears to come from animals. He is ambushed by Alan, who tries to get some information for his blog, while rambling that the virus is a biological weapon, but the scientist doesn't tell him anything. A7 Dr. Aaron is at Beth's workplace talking to her co-workers. None of them directly interacted with Beth after she came back from China so Aaron reassures them. They mention that another co-worker took her home from the airport, so she immediately calls him. He is on the bus and she instructs him to get off because he is highly contagious. He waits at the stop until Beth arrives with a containment crew. Meanwhile, a doctor asks Mitch a bunch of questions about Beth, trying to figure out the virus origin and other people she may have interacted with. The doctor mentions that she landed in Chicago before flying to Minnesota hours later, and asks him if she left the airport or had any meetings there. He asks whether someone is sick in Chicago, and that before they got married she had a relationship with John Neal, who lives there. Realization hits Mitch and he asks if John is infected. The doctor doesn't answer, saying that she can't give out that information. Ally informs Cheever that the virus contains pig and bat sequences and shows him how the virus attaches to humans. She also says that the virus keeps mutating. The virus mortality rate is over percent. And there are no treatment protocols or vaccines so Dr. Cheever orders that from now on only highest security labs should work on it, fear of it leaking out. Ally calls Ian and tells him he isn't allowed to work on the virus because his lab doesn't have the right security certification. He thinks this is a mistake because he is making progress and thinks that only working on it in government-run labs will slow the research. Day 8 Dr. Cheever informs the public that the virus is in Minneapolis, Chicago, Los Angeles, Boston and Salt Lake and that the list is expected to grow. The number of infected people worldwide is estimated to be at thousand. 
Cheever and Ally are at the CDC, discussing the virus with scientists from all over the world. Nobody has managed to grow the virus in cells. It kills every animal cell they have tried. Dr. Leonora has been sent to Hong Kong to investigate Beth's movements to find ground. She is met by Sun Feng. Using Beth's credit card record she learns that she was at a casino. So Leonora orders the casino's security tapes. Ian defies orders and keeps working on the virus. He manages to grow the virus using a particular bat cells, which is the first step in making a vaccine. He shares the research and Cheever is not happy that he defied orders and asks what he wants to gain from it. But instead of selling the results to some drug company he just wants acknowledgement for his work. Day 12. The worldwide infected estimate has reached million. Alan is approached by a hedge fund guy who is looking for an opportunity to gain money from this and thinks Alan might give him one. Seeing that he was the first to pay attention to the bus video and has been talking about it on his blog since, reaching over million unique visitors. Alan tells him about Forsythia. He thinks it's the cure. Leonora is watching the casino footage where the first known infected can be seen interacting. But the Chinese officials say that this isn't proof that the virus originated here, stating that you can't see a virus on camera. Aaron is planning to make a makeshift hospital at multiple stadiums in preparation for an increase in infected. Day 14. Aaron wakes up in the hotel room coughing. She takes her temperature and realizes she has the virus so she informs the hotel staff to get her the names of everyone who has serviced the room. She calls Cheever and tells him the bad news and later ends up in one of the stadiums. Cheever tries to get her to a better facility, but is told that it's a waste of resources for just one person. In China, Leonora has finished her research and concluded that Beth is patient zero and will send the data to Geneva. Sun Feng says he read on the internet that the United States and France have a vaccine but are hiding it from China. As she leaves he makes a phone call. While driving, the car is stopped and Leonora is put in a van. Sun Feng takes her to his village and plans on using her as collateral to get the vaccine as early as possible. Cheever is informed that there are plans to quarantine Chicago. The National Guard is setting up roadblocks and shutting down the border. The Secret Service is moving the president underground and Congress is figuring out how to work online. He is also told that when word of this gets out, there will be widespread panic, so it's crucial to not tell anyone until they are ready to announce it publicly. Alan has caught the virus and is making a video for his blog of him taking for Scythia, saying that if he's alive tomorrow everyone will know it works. Later that day, Cheever calls his wife and instructs her to leave Chicago and not tell anyone. She picks up a ton of supplies and when a friend inquires about the situation, she spills the beans. Day 18. Apparently Alan's blog is gaining traction and he's still alive. So a bunch of people are waiting in line at a pharmacy. And once they are informed that only doses of forsythia will be given out, a panic ensues and they all scramble. Mitch and his daughter go to the store for some food, but the city is in disarray. With people looting and sick people walking around without masks and coughing, so they get out of there. They try to get to a neighboring state and learn that the border is closed because they are in quarantine. Erin is still at one of the stadiums. When a man next to her complains about being cold, Erin tries to give him her jacket, but is too weak to do so. She dies not long after. Shiver is having a TV interview where alternative unproven drugs are being talked about. He informs that they are being evaluated but besides that, the best people can do is wash their hands and social distance. When Alan comes on, he is quoted saying that the truth about the virus is being kept from the world by the CDC and who to allow friends of the current administration to benefit financially and physically. Allen insists that the WHO is in bed with pharmaceutical companies, but Cheever denies these claims and reasons that there is no science to back up for Sith. Allen discredits him, because apparently his wife's friend posted about the quarantine on Facebook hours before the official announcement. Later Cheever is told that he can't yet be replaced, but there will be an investigation and he is to keep out of the public eye for now. Day 21. David and Ally find out that the virus has mutated and the new strain is way more contagious. They've been testing potential vaccines on monkeys but none have survived thus far. The mortality rate is between in percent, depending on a person's health diet and socioeconomic status. It is expected that with this new strain each person will infect more whereas previously it was. And without a vaccine it is anticipated that approximately percent of the world population will contract the disease. Day 26. The death toll in the United States has reached million. The president has issued a statement implementing mandatory curfew in major metropolitan areas. Due to the riots, the military is distributing rations but runs out while hundreds are still waiting in line and people start fighting. 
Later Mitch hears shots in the neighboring house and tries to call but all lines are busy. Day 29. Mitch breaks into the neighbor's empty house and steals a gun. Jory is in the backyard with her boyfriend, making snow angels. He gets on top of her and takes off his mask. She turns away but he reasons that if none of them have the virus they can't give it to each other. They are about to kiss but Mitch shows up and pulls him off of her and orders for him to go home. Back at the CDC allies vaccine finally works and she injects herself. She goes to see her father at a hospital, takes off her mask and tells him about the news. He is concerned and says he doesn't want to get her sick but she says she's testing the vaccine. The vaccine starts being manufactured and FDA is accelerating the approval. The first doses available for humans are expected in around days, but it could take a year to get everyone vaccinated. The current death toll worldwide from the virus is estimated to be million. Day 131 Cheever's house is broken into by robbers, who are looking for the vaccine. The robbers ask his wife where it is, thinking that they would get it first because he works for the government, but they don't. Cheever gets home and asks if they hurt her. Alan, who is still against the vaccine, is talking to the hedge fund guy. He says that the studies show that there is no proof that Forsythia works and asks if he knew about them when they first met. Alan questions the integrity of the studies implying that there is some conspiracy. He then notices a suspicious man and realizes that he's wearing a wire so he tries to run but is apprehended by the authorities, who arrest him for securities fraud, conspiracy, and possible manslaughter. He insists that Forsythia cured him. Day 133 Since there is not enough vaccines for everyone yet, the lottery is held using birthdays to distribute it fairly. Back in China, Leonora has adjusted to her captivity and is teaching the children. Sun Feng informs her that it's time to go. Because the government has agreed to their demands and will give them doses of the vaccine in exchange for her. They make the exchange and Lenora is free. She's at the airport with the man who was sent to do the exchange and he gives her a vaccine and reveals that the ones they exchanged for her were placebos. Apparently there have been many kidnappings of scientists and government officials trying to extort vaccines so the government refuses to give in to their demands. Lenora is horrified that they would condemn a village of mostly children to death and runs off. Alan's blood results showed no antibodies for the virus, which means he faked being sick. The push for Scythia on his followers, which made him million dollars because of him. There are now millions of people who don't trust the vaccine. One of his followers made bail for him so he walks out. A 135. Alan is back on the street resuming his blog, pushing the narrative that the US is responsible for the virus and that vaccines are a scam to his million internet followers. Otherwise things are starting to go back to normal with anarchy and looting subsiding. Ally and David put the virus in liquid nitrogen storage with other deadly viruses from the past. Mitch finally lets Jory see her boyfriend since he is now vaccinated and gifts her a dress for a makeshift prom he has organized. He gets the camera to take some pictures but breaks down crying after seeing Beth's pictures. A final flashback occurs. A bat is seen dropping a piece of fruit in a pig farm. One of the pigs eats it and gets infected. A chef is preparing the pig but is told that someone wants to take a picture with him. He goes out without washing his hands and takes a picture with Beth. If you liked this video, please click on the next one. Thank you for watching.